Hello and welcome back to Badminton Insight. If you're new here, we're Greg and Jenny, two professional mixed doubles players and we're also creating weekly content on all things badminton. Yeah, so mixed doubles tactics, something a lot of you have asked us about. And on our Instagram and YouTube community tab, we asked you what you guys wanted to know. And we had over a hundred questions. So we've decided to break these down and answer them in a three part series. Yeah, so in this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know about the serve and return of serve situation. It's gonna be a good one. So get your notepad out and let's get to it. Okay, we're gonna start by making a generalization so we don't have to keep repeating ourselves throughout the whole video. And this is that generally the woman is physically weaker than the man. And what we mean by this is that we're not quite as quick or powerful. And this explains some of the tactics behind mixed doubles. So firstly, some basics so that we're all on the same page. When the man is serving, the woman is going to stand in front of him so that you're able to start the rally in your preferred formation with the man at the back and the woman at the front. If the man isn't faster or more powerful at the back of the court, like Jenny just said, then there's actually no need to set up like this. Now, one of the most asked questions was which side should the woman stand on when the man is serving? And there is no definitive right or wrong answer to this. It really depends. And even at the professional level, pairs will opt for different setups. So what you choose to do is dependent on your strengths and weaknesses. As a female, think about your strengths. So if you're really good at intercepting on your forehand, then you should favour standing on this side. As a man, you might have a really weak backhand, so you might need your woman to protect this area and stand on this side to cover it. We'd really advise trying out both sides and then deciding on your preference together. It is most common for the woman to stand opposite the man, like we've just shown. However, as we've said, there is no right or wrong. And whilst we're talking about the woman's positioning, it's important to not stand too close to the net when the man is serving. Otherwise, it's more difficult to intercept shots. But you also don't want to stand too far back as you'll be later onto any net shots. So ideally, standing around this position here. Of course, if your opponents are returning to the same place every time and you can't get it from this position, then you can adjust where you stand. For example, you might move one step over if they're returning soft down your backhand side every time or you might move back a step if they never play net shot returns. And mainly try to avoid leaving too big of a gap for your opponents to play into. A quick tip is also for the woman to have your racket at around head height to give you the best chance to be early onto the return and also look threatening right from the start of the rally. Okay, so we've got the woman in the right place, but where should the man stand when serving? Of course, if your woman is standing in front of you and you've got to cover the whole of the rear court, then you can't also stand on the service line to serve. You might be laughing, but we've seen people do it. You might see some professional men stand as close as around half a meter, but they have the speed to quickly move back to get behind the lift. And they're also fast onto any mid court returns. In terms of how far back you should stand, as we've said, don't obviously stand too close, but we also wouldn't recommend standing any further back than two racket lengths from the service line to your front foot. This is because standing too far back will give your opponent more time to react and move to where your serve is going. So a good position is around here. Yeah, and similar to the woman, you might also adjust your position depending on your opposition. And also you might adjust your position depending on the conditions of the hall. So if you're playing with really fast shuttles, your opponents might not want to lift. So you might stand a little bit further forwards and really put pressure on their mid court returns. I also vary how far away I stand from this center line as this can slightly change the angle of your serve. Don't stand too wide though, as it may open up the angles leaving you to cover big gaps on the court. So hopefully that covers the positioning and setup for the serve in mixed. We'll now move on to where you should serve to and where you should move after the serve. The biggest piece of advice we can give about where to serve to is to keep it varied. If you only ever do a short serve to the tee, then your opponent can move their starting position forwards and be earlier onto your serve. But if you occasionally do a low wide serve, a flick up the line or a flick out to the tram lines, then they'll be more uncomfortable returning your serve. And this is the same no matter if you're serving to the man or to the woman. And of course, if your serves to the tee or one specific area are going really well, then keep going with this. But if they're not, then remember to mix it up. Okay, so you're in the correct setup and you're both varying your serves. But where a lot of people get confused is what to do after you've served. This all depends where you serve to. Let's start with short serves and then we'll move on to flicks. Firstly, we'd highly recommend communicating with your partner where you're serving to. This might feel uncomfortable or weird at first, but it hugely improves your organization. So you're not looking for the same shot or leaving huge gaps in the court. 
As the woman, most often you'd either look for the net shot or to intercept the push down the middle or the push down the side you're standing on like this. Which shot you look for will mostly depend on your opponent's habits, but also on your serve placement, as this can determine what shots they can or cannot play. And as the man, you need to look for, well, everything else. But for example, if you find that your opponents always play it flat into your backhand corner, then you can ask your woman to stand further back to try and cover this shot. She would therefore be sacrificing taking it earlier than net. However, she can always lift out if they do play a net shot. This situation was actually one of the most liked questions on our YouTube community tab, so hopefully we've given you three solutions to try out. The first one is to vary your serve so that your opponents can't easily hit it into your backhand. So maybe by serving slightly across them like this, or even flicking them. The second option is to move back so you have less distance to travel to your backhand corner. And the third one is to ask your woman to help you. Now, what should you do after either of you flick? Well, firstly, it's really important to mention that the flick should be used as an attacking shot. It can create so many opportunities and expose a lot of gaps in the court if you use it well and are organised. So, generally, after either of you flick out wide to the tram line, the man will cover the shortest distance as he has more time to react and the woman will cover the longest distance. There will be some caveats to this though. For example, as left-handers, if Greg flicks out wide from the right box and I'm stood on the left-hand side, then I'll actually cover this left tram line as the natural swing for a right-hander is to hit it cross, so this will likely go to Greg. Now, if you flick down the line, hopefully it's a winner like this. Yeah, Good flick, again. But if it's not an outright winner, then the woman would remain roughly in her starting position like this and then the man would try and anticipate where the shot is coming to by quickly analysing his opponent's body and racket positioning. He can then play a block or drive into space to either get the attack or even win the point outright. Happy days. As we mentioned earlier, the flick should be used as an attacking shot. So, like with other areas of the game, your positioning after the flick will depend on the quality of the serve. If it's good, then you should be in a more aggressive position with both your racket and body but sometimes you might just do a rubbish flick and your opponents are completely on balance. Here, the woman should just do her best and the man should move back into a more defensive position like this. As we've said throughout the video, there is no definitive right or wrong. Just make sure you communicate and that after the flick, you both don't just cover the shot down the middle. And lastly, we would say you should generally flick the woman more to get her to the back of the court and your opponents in their least favorite formation. However, if the man struggles returning the flicks, then keep flicking him. Or if the woman stands really far back and easily gets the flicks, then short serves might be the best option. Okay, that's the setup and serving situation covered. We've just got one more section to get. And hopefully by now you've realized why we've split this topic of mixed doubles tactics into three videos. Yes, it's a huge topic. And if you do want even more explanations and match analysis, then we've just started doing this on our Patreon page. Last week, we actually did a live stream for over an hour analysing two different matches, one of ours and one of our patrons. And we'll be doing much more of this over the coming months. So if you want to join these live streams, plus get access to lots more exclusive perks, such as our Discord server and Q&As, or you just want to support us and the work we're doing on this channel for as little as the price of a cup of coffee a month, then we'll include a link in the description and pinned comment below on how to join. There's also now the option for an annual membership, which gets you 10% discount. And thank you in advance to anyone who does join. Anyway, on to the third and final part of the video, returning the serve. Firstly, and this might be a bit controversial with some people, but the woman doesn't have to start the match returning the serve. It should be whoever has the best return. We're here to win, right? Exactly. Actually, the woman rarely starts returning at professional level. And it's also the same for who starts serving. If the man has a much better serve than the woman, then he should serve first. Praveen Jordan's a good example. She doesn't even have a bad serve, he's just got a really good serve. So yeah, have a think about this and hopefully we'll see less tradition from now on and people actually trying to win matches. Okay, let's move on to where you should return to and move to after this. So one of the most asked questions in mixed doubles is where should the guy return to and where should he move after this? And this is where a lot of people go wrong. So here are a few options for you to try out. From the short serve, you can play a net shot where you would either stay at the net and your woman take the back or you can move back straight away and let your woman take the net as she should already be stood relatively close to the net. 
Which of these two options you would do really comes down to how comfortable your woman is at the back of the court. And of course, you should discuss this with your partner so you don't either both stay in at the net or both rush back, leaving a massive gap in the court. Another good option for the man is to play returns down the sides of the court, either hard into the corner, especially when the man is serving, or soft returns down the tramline. After this, you would usually move back to cover the whole half of your court. If your return puts your opponent under pressure, then your woman can stay in at the net as it's unlikely they'll be able to play over her head. But if it's not, she might need to move back a bit. Okay, so there were a few options for the man, but what should the woman do off the short serve? Well, she can also do these returns we've just mentioned, but instead of moving back, she would tend to stay at the net afterwards. It's just really important to focus on the quality of these shots to give you the advantage and make it difficult for your opponents. Now, what happens if your opponents flick you? Well, the man should try to attack the flick serve. Of course, if you're completely off balance, then you don't attack and you'd clear out instead so that you don't get easily whipped. But if you're only slightly off balance, then try to attack with good placement. This brings your woman into the game for the full shot whilst you recover. The benefits of having a partner, eh? And of course, if it's a bad flick and you're on balance, then just smash it on the floor. Another highly asked question was what should we do as the woman if we're flicked? Well, we'd recommend, again, trying to attack it, but not with 100% power unless it's a rubbish flick, as this could put you off balance and may allow your opponents to whip the shuttle into space as it will come to them quicker. Instead, shot placement is more important than power, and after you've played this return of serve, it's then the question of whether you should stay at the back or rush forwards to the net. However, this falls under the huge topic that is rotations. So we'll discuss that in next week's video, along with everything else you need to know about mixed doubles attack. If you've made it to this point in the video, then well done to you. We hope that notepad is full. Leave us a racket emoji in the comments below so that we know some people actually made it to this point. And leave two if you're gonna watch this video again. And if you appreciate the 10 hours it took us to prepare it, plus our whole lives learning this stuff, five hours to film and around 20 hours to edit, then please give it a like, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out our Patreon page and we'll hopefully see you on next week's part two of Mixed Doubles Tactics. Or if you're watching this more than one week from now, it'll be here for you. Bye.